Hey friends, how are you? I'm here with a video talking about, this is basically coming from the mama perspective as you all witnessed me transition into as someone who started creating videos here on this channel uh, back in 2014, I think, a while ago. And basically, I think it was 2013 actually. So basically I was making these videos as a young, you know, ma un, well, what's the term for a non-mama? <laughs> I don't even know anymore. Um, just as a, a married woman, but with no children, right? So I had a secure home relationship, no obligations to tiny little humans that I had to be accountable for, to just nurture and, and mold and, and, you know, protect and be a guardian for. So you saw me, I, I had a lot of free time on my hands. I was able to watch whatever I wanted to. I was able to go to the bars um, every Sunday, right? Cause I didn't want to pay for Sunday ticket at the time. Cause I was still, you know, financially being on a budget, but, um, but yeah, you saw me be able to stay at bars for like three hours and live stream with y'all. And when it was just me, I just did whatever I wanted and it was real easy, real graceful. Um, but as you all witnessed, this hardcore football fanatic had her first child and that really limited my capacity to do the things that I used to do, right? Just from a physical perspective, but also from a parenting obligation perspective where I couldn't take my baby to the bar every Sunday, right? And I couldn't just sit and watch games for like two to three hours nonstop because I had to breastfeed the baby, I had to care for the baby, bathe the baby, you know, all of these things. And then when the Eagles won the Super Bowl, I had another child. So I went from one and doubling down on what I was doing and that really just completely pulled me away from watching football. Like I literally was just so exhausted. As many of you know who have had kids, you know, sleeping through the night was not a normal thing, uh, especially while they were both still so young. And so I really, you saw me guys disappear and now I'm back, but I'm back on a new capacity with this new lens of being a mama. And I want to share with you guys in this video, basically the problems that I'm coming into uh, in trying to re-immerse re -immerse myself into the whole NS NFL community and being a fan again and watching, you know, like I used to, I just want to share with you some reasons why it's been a struggle. And I just want to hear from any mamas out there, any parents, do you feel the same way? Did you have the same kind of, uh, issues, mental struggles? I'm going to put it out here and I've stood strong with putting my family first, right? I've always put my children first, my husband first, family is the most important thing. Of course, God is the number one thing, but in a physical standpoint, it's my family. And so I've really had to limit myself as you guys have seen, like I didn't do posts for like two years straight, right? I was just like, I missed you guys, but I had to, you know, kind of die to myself and what I wanted to do and be more selfless and, and put my family first. So here's what I've been struggling with since coming back or trying to come back, trying to dip my toe in the water again. So the first thing is the time commitment. So y'all, those days when I could be at the bars all day, eating whatever I wanted, drinking whatever I wanted, saying whatever I wanted and watching whatever I wanted. Now having kids, they have their own little eye gates, right? And biblically speaking, it says that our eyes are the gate to our souls, right? It, it's really important what we put in front of our eyes and especially as children, right? Children have this innocence that we're meant to protect and preserve. So what, what was happening is I needed to spend more time with kids in friendly, family-friendly viewings, things that they could see, where football didn't quite fit into that. So um, here's an example why. So the second, so the first thing is the time commitment. The second thing was the commercials. So I actually did try and sit down. I think you saw my channel. I live streamed one playoff game that I think it was the Saints versus Eagles. And um I tried live streaming. You guys got a glimpse of the kids kind of wanting my attention. But the other thing that I noticed while sitting and trying to watch these games is I had to pause the commercials. I had to be aware of what commercials were being had because there was some 
now that I have this new eye of viewing the world for my kids' betterment, like there's some perverted stuff. There's some scary, like think of scary movies, right? That are advertising. Like there's some stuff that my little two-year-old, one-year-old, like they should not see at that age. And so I was so shocked to have that awareness of like, wow, I watched all this stuff without batting an eye because I was an adult. I was mature. I was like, oh yeah, this is fine for everybody. But once I had a sweet little innocent human being, like I realized, wow, if they saw this, this would give them nightmares and make them wake them up in the middle of the night and make my life harder. Right. And now from a spiritual stance, especially scary stuff uh, and lustful stuff, I've seen deliverances like Okay, remember what deliverance means when people get a demon cast out of them? I've watched videos of people getting demons cast out, which if you wanna see, watch some of my other videos. I show plenty of evidence that this is happening. And some of the, the demons when they're manifesting out of people, they literally say, I entered while watching, while this child got traumatized from watching a scary movie. When she finally commanded the demons to come out, I, I had this big scream. And then it took a, a few seconds before I realized, is it gone or is it still going on? What's, what's going on? And then this sweet worship to Jesus does start to bubble up and come forth. Okay, so it literally entered because of that eye gate where the human was not fully uh, developed or emotionally strong enough to handle that content. So it literally caused a trauma, which allowed a demonic oppression to happen. And so I was just like, whoa, like that really just confirmed the importance of what we put in front of our child's eyes. And I know we can't shelter them from everything, but still preserve that innocence as much as you can and also build up their spiritual strength to if they do accidentally see something that they can handle it and process it without trauma okay so that's the second thing commercials now the third thing which really got highlighted during 2020 is the pandemic the politics okay politics has already been in football but it really reared its its vicious self in this pandemic where it's like people couldn't even go to a football game without having to make a very important medical decision about their bodies like that blew my mind like you know and then to see i i don't care where you stand on that i'm not here to have a debate whether people should do it or do it not do it but still taking the free will away from people like and, and forcing a a very important and very um a decision that takes a lot of of thought and and insight and wisdom like to kind of just like force a decision on someone because of the politics and government stuff around it like i was just shocked so the fact that they took away the option for people and that they really just took sides and really ostracized a group of people or pressured that group of people that wasn't ready like to me that was kind of sh kind of shady to be honest so that i now have like my awareness of of the nfl um contributing to certain political agendas and i don't know how i feel about that okay just to be honest like i it it kind of caught me off guard this year so that was the other piece the politics and um and then the other piece is just kind of the the environment of some people, right? So some some of the fans. Like I was just watching, um, I think it was a basketball game where 
Um, some of the fans were attacking a mother, a wife of one of the players and their children. And that just blew my mind. There's a lot of anger and aggression in those settings, plus mixed with alcohol and drugs that it creates in some instances, an unsafe environment for children. And so, um, so with that, like I'm really looking to re re-enter but i need to i needed to just point those things out because one i want to know what are your opinions on this what are your solutions to this because i you know me i miss you guys i want to engage i want to go to football games i want to tailgate with you guys but i need to do it now in a more family friendly way and i'm trying to think of some solutions so let me share with y'all what i've kind of started my wheels are turning in my brain like how do i give hugs to all my peoples in person um where okay i can't go to the bar every sunday right and watch all the commercials or whatever it is or listen to whatever music they're playing right with my kids um but i could maybe we could maybe host family barbecues right where it's kid friendly we all have our kids together kind of like a big play date where we can spend a couple hours together while watching our kids, but watching the football game. And then when the commercials come, we, we strategically pause and play family friendly music or, or another alternate video. And then we play, you know, so, so I'm just trying to think through this process where we can have family friendly experiences with football, but putting faith in family first while enjoying football. So that's kind of where I'm at. And I'm thinking of, hey, if I do go to a game like Arizona, right? The Eagles play in Arizona um, a lot. So if I do wanna make the drive out there, like what does that look like now? Like I used to host football games and you guys know me, I used to be chugging, you know, popping bottles of champagne and like doing all this wild, crazy stuff. And it's like, well, I can't do that with my kids anymore. So what does that look like? If you guys have gone through this type of transition of being like a hardcore, you know, football fan without having the kid obligation and doing while and out and now having to like tame it down a little bit. Um, let me know what that looked like for you. What did you guys do? And to be honest with you, like I'm not saying, oh, I can't while out and, and be crazy and drink and do all this stuff. Like I honestly don't want to do that stuff anymore. And that's the other piece is like now that I've reignited my my faith, you know, to the level of really understanding that, ooh, like there really is a devil, there really is a, a God and Jesus who saved us. Um, like my heart is just like, I just wanna honor that and I don't have the drive to want to, you know, binge drink at the bar all day, you know? And not, I, again, I, no condemnation here. I did all this and I have video evidence of it all. It was fun, I enjoyed every moment. And so I'm not here to condemn, but I'm just letting you guys know, like I'm a little different now. Like the, the Bible says, when you get baptized, when you get saved, like you literally become a new creation. And that is exactly what happened to me. Like I'm literally a different person. Like I can't even believe how different I am compared to who I was and who I was wasn't bad, but like who I am now is just so much like I was already happy, now I'm like magnified by a thousand, happy and joyful and at peace. So, um, so that, that's it, <laughs> I guess. Um, so I would love to hear your suggestions and hey, who are my um, people who have young kids that are into uh, watching football, but trying to make it work where they can, you know, have quality family time while being able to enjoy passively the football games. So let me know who you are. I would love to just have us start supporting each other and starting to support our children, right? So that they can have um, a nurturing environment while we all get to have fun and enjoy community together. So I just have to say, I love you guys. Okay, I know this sounds cheesy and I say it, but like, honestly, I do. Like, because of this revelation I've had in Christ, like, I, I see you guys as my brothers and sisters. Like, I really just want to honor you. I appreciate you and I care about you and I do love you. Like, that sounds probably crazy because you're like, you don't even know me probably. But like, this uh, understanding of the word of God and seeing the way Jesus walked, like he was the one that sat with the sinners and, and you know, the murderers, the prostitutes and loved them 
They, he was the only person that would love them. And because he looked past their, their actions, he knew in their spirit that they were a part of his kingdom. And so that's how I see you guys. And I know I've come off a little crazy at times, but I just want you to know my heart that I genuinely do love you guys. So please reach out if you do want to connect. Like I'm ready in this season, I think, to start connecting and having gatherings and I don't again I don't know what that looks like so this is like me trying to put feelers out of like one letting you know where I'm at with this stuff because it's very different than what it was before and two like what should we start doing you know so um that's it I hope you just have a wonderfully blessed day and I'm sending hugs virtual hugs from out here in California and I'll be back soon so bye and adios Mwah.